Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over LTCN, BCHG, and the rest of the Grayscale Trusts and how these dip buying opportunities <clears throat> might be one of the last opportunities you're ever going to get this bull cycle. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to say here is I apologize. We're getting the content out a little bit, little bit late. Woke up this morning as stiff as a rock because of a long work day yesterday. Yes, we do work, believe it or not, uh, so we're not always going to be available exactly whenever you guys need it, unfortunately, but uh, as long as we are working a traditional job, that's just how it's going to have to be. So before we get into this, I uh, first want to get into the super thanks. There was a lot of you guys that that gave super thanks, and I'm actually genuinely shocked. I was not expecting this kind of response uh, when I went over why we were not going to do channel memberships again because of, you know, the negative toxic behavior that was coming from some of these people. Um, I was honestly expecting more hostility. I was not expecting this. So uh, thank you to all of you that did this. Uh, we're going to go over those names right here. So no more serfs, $25. Thank you for that. Uh, forgive me if I'm saying this wrong. Ray P. Uh, $10. Super thanks. Really appreciate you. You guys are very generous. Um, <laughs> too generous honestly uh, but this does help us get more con content out to you guys uh, kind of the goal here is to be able to eventually you know quit the job and just be able to focus on providing content for you guys full time I mean the more time we have to do this the more time we can dedicate it to it but we're having to kind of do this and you know spin a, bu a bunch of other plates simultaneously at the same time so uh, this helps us it really does so super thanks from Wayfan, $25. Thank you for that. Um, trying to see if I can find the rest of them here. So we'll just scroll up to the top real quick. So $24 uh, from Tony. Give me just one second. I need to see if I actually have you written down here, I believe. Yes, I do. Okay, so Tony P, uh, $25. Super thanks from Tony P. Thank you, Tony, Tony P, for that. Really appreciate your generosity, man. And um, also $20 from the guard, 2011. Uh, we are really, truly grateful for all you guys' support. Again, we're doing everything we can to get content out to you guys, but it's really difficult when we got a day trade and swing trade and work 40 hours a week plus. And, you know, I could go on and on down this list, but we're doing like, it seems like a never ending amount of things like just constantly day by day, week after week. So, and last, but certainly not least, um, I am a Royster. Hope I got that right. $10 super. Thanks. Thank you for that. Um, you guys have been extremely generous. We were not expecting this. And again, just want to say thanks to all of you for supporting the channel and our efforts here that we provide for you. And, um, you know, hopefully with some of these, uh, setups you guys have managed to somehow benefit your own life too so because we're not just here um you know we're not just here for the whole entertainment piece as it were so to speak or you know doing content and stuff like that we actually genuinely genuinely want to help people so uh now getting into our grayscale trust portfolio yes we do actually own some of these so um still have the same amount of cash just kind of sitting on the side waiting for bitcoin and the altcoin markets to make a move uh, yeah, it's kind of just been stagnant lately. There's one thing I could say about that. Um, generally speaking, when we're sitting at the lows and some of these altcoins and Bitcoin are doing nothing, that's usually indicative of an accumulation zone. We'll get into this in a later video. I don't want to get too deep into it right now. But usually when we see the opposite of that, when Bitcoin and altcoins are sitting at all-time highs, but they're just kind of bobbing around, not going up, not going down, that's generally distribution, meaning it's going to sell off. But since it's the having, we don't want to assume anything. I mean, it could go up, could go down. We just don't know yet. So we kind of have some cash sitting here just waiting to see what's going to happen. And if the uh, the dips come, then we buy. So, um, And of course, you know, we may or may not, no promises, we may or may not take profit early. I know a lot of people are upset about that. But I mean, guys, look. We're not telling you what to do with your money. We're never going to tell you what to do with your money. So please show mutual respect and give us that same respect. You know, this is our portfolios. We, it's our money. We've worked hard for this and we're going to do what we feel is right with it at whatever time we decide. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so still have ETCG. Uh, this one is quite a bit down actually. Um, 
we're thinking about buying more. We actually decided to add a new grayscale truss, as you guys can see, but we still have HN, still kind of waiting for it to get to that buy zone to make a move. Uh, LTCN still massively in profit, up 170%, as you guys can see. Uh, pretty, pretty big upside here. I do expect LTCN to go much, much higher from this point. Um, how high exactly? It's hard to say because uh, we don't know yet what the retail FOMO is going to look like. It will come eventually, but it's hard to know exactly just how volatile that's going to be so uh 1323 that's our average cost basis and mana this is one that we just recently picked up uh so we picked up roughly about a thousand dollars of this only 44 shares again it's not that much but you know i mean a 10x on a thousand bucks is still ten thousand bucks so um we'll go over max profit targets on this one specifically specifically on this video so we can show you guys uh what it looks like but uh, with mana, we were actually kind of at a toss up between mana and GBAT. We weren't really sure which one we wanted to buy. We sent these, we sent these possible buying opportunities out on X. Uh, if you guys follow us on X, you would have seen this. If you don't, well, it's your loss. Don't know what to tell you. We've said many times, Hey, if you guys want some updates on some things, follow us on X, but you know, we can't convince people that are not willing. So, um, we did go ahead and buy based on one of those signals we sent. So that was mana. And again, not every signal that we ever send you guys, we're, we're not going to buy every signal out there that we send you guys. It, 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 we are genuinely giving great opportunities to take advantage of whether you choose to or not. It just doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to buy it. We may, or we may not because we might just simply have other priorities at the time, but you know, the opportunity is there. So we present it. And if you guys want to take advantage of it, then there it is. So uh, before we get into that, we'll into LTCM. We'll talk about mana real quick. So as you guys can see, it was kind of approaching this level, and we sent a tweet out on X basically saying, "Hey, look, uh, we think this thing is kind of bottom, but somewhere between eighteen to twenty bucks, which is pretty much where that support is." Again, you kind of have this channel here, um, so it kind of busted out of that channel. So you know that's probably going to sit as strong support. All those candle tops up there, and the EMAs are also kind of sitting towards the uh in between the current price and where the bottom of that zone is as you guys can see and we also told you that if this thing bounces from support it's going to be roughly about a three and a half x just to get back to the highs okay now in terms of fibonacci levels and this is how we're going to measure what the actual possibility of the peak is here do i think it could be much larger than this yes i do um, anything above and beyond the Fibonacci's, I cannot give you guys an indication of how far I think it's going to go unless I'm looking at the market cap, but you guys can see the maximum Fibonacci level here is $290. So a huge, huge upside on this. I mean, you're talking like almost a 15 X. So again, we only put a grand in, but if it does a 15x, which would be absolutely insane. I mean, we just turned a 1,000 into 15,000 by simply buying at the right time down here, like we told you guys, and just waiting for it to go up. Now, are we going to hold it to $300? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it depends on what the charts show us and what we think is the right move to make at that particular time. So anyways, that's mana. Um, so LTCN, it did look like we were going to get potentially get a breakout of this trend line, but then again, it did not happen. So we got another rejection. Uh, that's not surprising, really. I mean, the last time we saw this, it took many, many weeks to get above this level. We kind of tested it twice, got that tweezer top, bang, shot straight down. And then I remember telling you guys a long time ago, I said, hey, this is a triple tweezer bottom. This is going to be extremely bullish. Uh, keep a lookout on this. And the next thing you know, a few weeks later, we just absolutely shredded to the upside just tore up these resistance levels like they weren't even there um and then once we got a break of this trend line that's when the real parabolic move started to happen so as of right now we're waiting for a break of that trend if i go down to the daily time frame here uh you guys can see once again we did actually get rejected off of this so no actual confirmed breakout yet go back to the previous breakout here as you guys can see it's a very clear clearly defined downtrend line it's respecting this trend line very firmly um it was kind of stuck it was kind of stuck in between this um wedge pattern here but once we got a break of the downtrend line it basically just blasted off straight to the upside from there and what was beautiful about this is it actually took off from the support zone as well so you had the emas the support and the break of this trend line all kind of lining up perfectly for a 
essentially what most traders would consider to be a perfect uh, breakout scenario here. So um, again, something similar could happen. We could see like a kind of test, rejection, test, rejection, and then it comes down to this support. And maybe we get kind of clinched somewhere between the support and the breakout point here. And then boom, it <clears throat> skyrockets straight to the upside. That could happen. In that case, the price would be sitting between the uh, support, the trend line, and the EMAs would all kind of line up. And then we would have that big, massive rocket ship move to the upside. So something I wanted to point out to you guys that I did point out before, uh, we did post this once on X. It actually got, it kind of went viral and got a ridiculous amount of retweets. So thank you all for that. But um, so from this breakout move to the recent high, as you guys can see here, the move was nearly 260%. That was based on a breakout um, formation here, bouncing off of support and the EMAs. If we get something similar to that from this breakout point let's just say it breaks out next week so let's see if i can try to line this up nicely so we'll say a breakout next week from this line as you guys can see a 261 percent move would put us almost perfectly at the top of this resistance why does this resistance matter because you can see it's very heavily traded we got a reject big rejection here um kind of this ridiculous looking wick here indicating that the sellers were not Either profit takers and or sellers were not willing to let the price go higher at that time. And it was a major bounce uh, in the middle of the bull market last time. As you guys can see, this was the only time that price came down this low, tested it, and then went back up to near the highs. Literally the only time it happened before the bull, before the bull market and after the bull market. That was the only time it did that. And uh, then it went back up and then ultimately we basically broke through it in the bear market. So... Um, again, why is this significant? Because, well, basically the target is pretty much the top of the resistance here. I actually got to move this back up because I'm pretty sure this is roughly about 100 to 135, but resistance is one, 100 to 135. As you guys can see, the target lines up perfectly. And then of course, in terms of the immediate move, we need to get above this control bar. I mean, that's really just simply put until we get above that. I mean, LTC has just kind of kind of stagnate a little bit. So once we get above that, we're definitely going to get a breakout for sure. Um, and then I, I suspect we might hit a little bit of resistance at 75, but then from there we'll go to about 100 to 135. So let's do the measurements on that now. Um, so from here to the control bar, you'd be looking at about 39, almost 40%. Uh, then to get up to that $75 level is 112%. And then resistance is going to be roughly about 180 to 280% move. All right, so BCHG, um, this one is also, it does actually have a very similar kind of formation to LTCN. As you guys can see, we had a triangle pattern or wedge pattern just like LTCN. It was kind of sitting at support before it broke this trend line, very similar to LTCN, riding the EMAs, and then boom, took off like a rocket ship. So how much did this thing go up? It went up roughly about a 6X, so from $4 all the way up to $24 up there, as you guys can see, huge move. So we'll just measure this real quick to give you guys another understanding of just how big this move could be. So the move itself from the breakout point to the wick high up there, as you guys can see, or sh should say the local high is about 434%. So again, that's a really, really huge move. So if we do the measured move from this, let's say this following week, assuming that it breaks out during the following week, which again, we don't know if that's going to happen or not, but uh, okay. Apparently this move is so huge that I can't even measure it. So um, again, You'd be looking at like something like this, so maybe like around a 93, 95-ish dollar level. And again, if I, this, this would, okay, so this would kind of actually make sense when we think about it. We're going to measure this so I can show you guys how this target lines up nicely with the Fibonacci's. So what did I say? I said that I thought that roughly about $93 was the target, right? If the move was to repeat like last time. Well, you guys can see that pretty much just right below that $100 level. So 97, just shy of the 430% target I just showed you guys would be the first 1.1618 Fibonacci. 
based on the uh, macro fib retracement. So it lines up pretty nicely with that. And of course, it would be well above the previous all time high, which is 60 bucks. So just wanted to point that out to you guys. There's a lot of confluence between uh, LCCN's price movement and BCHG. So again, HCN um, failed breakout of the flag. That does happen. It actually wasn't even a failed breakout, truthfully, because the candle did close back within the flag and then it kind of dumped. But it was basically just a pump fake. I mean, it people thought there was going to be a breakout and then you got dumped on and then it went down. That does kind of happen. Believe it or not, it's actually happened to me during day trading. Uh it's much more common than you guys realize, but uh, it's still quite a low probability setup. So uh, we're getting in a, a double, kind of a double wick rejection here, or what's known as a tweezer top. Usually this is kind of a green to red or red to green move. Uh, green to red if it's bearish, red to green if it's bullish. But in this case, it might, uh, this following week might actually really be a pretty huge sell off because these are both red. Uh, so I'd say that's a little bit extra bearish. Again, we're waiting for it to hit the zone between $4 to $4.20 uh, to buy in. $7 to $8 is going to be about resistance. If we measure that uh, from zone to zone, you're looking at about 78 to 102%. And then if I were to measure from the support zone to the wick high, you'd be looking at about 156% move. So ETCG kind of still sitting on this trend line. It does look like the candle might have popped its head out of there slightly, but I wouldn't really necessarily say this is super bearish. I mean, if it was a big, long red candle, then I would say, yeah, it's definitely time to worry. But um, as of right now, in my opinion, it still looks good. So you have the channel, the trend line, the EMAs and the support kind of all lining up. So support again is going to be between 13 to about 15, 80, 16 bucks and then 17, 70 to 20 dollars on the resistance side. So if we do the measured move here, you'd be looking at about 34 to 53% on ETCG. And we did read a comment on uh, going into kind of the discounts and premiums of ETCG. Uh, I forget who it was by, but, um, and the other Grayscale Trust, we'll try to get some stuff out to you guys like that. That's not something we're really familiar with or focus on in crypto, but if it's what you guys really want, we'll try to figure it out and uh, see what we can do for you, okay? So current resistance on GXLM, uh, we did get a break of this trend line. So in my opinion, we're probably going to come down to these candle bodies next. That's going to be roughly around 33 bucks. Uh, if it goes lower, maybe somewhere around the trend line here, 3150. The EMA is also there. So uh, this thing could actually be pretty close to bottoming out. But if we measure that to resistance, which is $53 and $58 respectively, you're looking at about 62 to 81%. And then to get back to the wick highs is 110%. So ETH E still holding this uh, handle pattern. Again, you're looking at a potential cup and handle here, which is very bullish. Target's going to be all the way up here at 55, 54 bucks, somewhere in there. Uh, it could bounce along this trend line or it could stop at this support. So you're talking anywhere from roughly about $17 ish basically to the current price so about 21 bucks so i'd say anywhere between 17 to 21 could be support and the current resistance is 25 dollars or 25 and a half 29 and 36 respectively so if we just measure from support take the most conservative estimate here you're looking at 41 to 65 percent and then as uh, as excuse me as much as 106 percent so Zcash, uh, this does look like it wants to get back down to this trend line. We shall see if it's actually going to do that or not. This is very choppy, so I'm not so sure. Uh, a lot of wicks to the downside, a lot of wicks to the upside, and just kind of real indecisive. But 440 to $5 is support, 740 to $8 is resistance. If you were to wait for that support zone, you'd be looking at about 54 to 68% and then 150% respectively. So GSOL, uh, that is a shooting star candle. That's very bearish. I suspect next week we're probably going to get a break of this trend line. I would be shocked if we did not. So again, um, I don't know where the immediate price action is going to go, but I do think it's going to base somewhere out between 175 to about 230. Uh, do with that what you will. And the top up there is 580. So the measure move from support to the Previous high is about a 200% gain, so pretty nice return there. 
Uh, mana, we're not going to do that because we already went over that. So GBAT, uh, this thing did have actually quite a bit more of a sell-off than I was initially anticipating. So um, it's possible it could still bounce here. It's hard to say, but... Uh, and I, I say this because it's sitting on the red EMA. That's usually kind of the last line of defense for the bulls, but do understand we just had a MACD death cross. So that indicates a shift in um, from buyer to seller momentum and also potentially, uh, how do I want to say this? Uh, a weakening of the bull trend, so to speak. So uh, at the lowest point, I think it probably bounces somewhere between maybe 450 to 530 at that support. At the highest point, maybe somewhere around seven and a half bucks or so. So pretty much where it is at currently. Uh, the 761, I'm pretty sure that's after hours trading, although I've never actually seen this traded after hours. So can't really tell you guys what to do with that. But if you waited for support and then sold up here at this wick high, which is again, 32 bucks, you'd be looking at 556%. So pretty, pretty massively juicy gain. Um, so G-Link, this thing has come down pretty much to almost exactly where we said it would. Broke the trend line, got that big fat red candle we were looking for to confirm a breakdown. Wick rejection, and then boom, what do you know? Another week of downside. So 85 to 66, that's where we said initially it was probably going to bottom. Uh, we're currently there. The opportunities, as a, in my opinion, as of right now, you can DCA down into support. But again, it's your money. Do what you want. Uh, so the wick high appears $220. If we just take the measured move from the current price to the wick high, it's a big move, so 157%. And then kind of towards the lower end, say 70-ish or somewhere, about 204%. And for those of you guys that think it's probably actually going to go lower, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and look at those. So you'd be looking at about 60 bucks at that EMA down there. And then if you think it's even lower than that, then maybe about 39 to about 45 bucks on uh, the G-Link Trust. So Phil G, uh, this thing has come down, uh, finally did make a move. So you had your high, your low, your lower high, and now we have a lower low. Um, again, this is very basic elementary technical analysis. Um, so again, I think this thing bottoms probably somewhere in the zone. So about 37 to 40 bucks or maybe as high as 63. Again, it's quite a ways away from there. It could stop at these candle tops and this EMA, but considering how fat that candle is, I would say it's probably not likely. So um, again, the move from where it is currently down to that support base is about 51% move. So uh, you guys can do with that what you will. So from 40 something bucks up to 395, you'd be looking at about 812% return. So that's a huge move. And GLIV, this thing is selling off. Of course, we expected that. So again, uh, we think that support likely is probably going to be somewhere around 28 to 26 bucks. Uh, so it's pretty much sitting exactly at those wick bottoms there. If you guys want to get in now, that's up to you. We're not going to buy this one, just so you guys know. Uh, we're going to stick with ones that are a little bit more liquid. But um, I mean, the opportunity is there. I mean, it's literally sitting right at the price we said it was going to hit. Uh, it could go down to about twelve fifty to fifteen dollars. That's possible too. We don't know, or maybe it stops at the bottom of this big green candle. That's generally what a lot of traders look for: a control bar or kind of these long wicks uh, on the bull side to get back in. So that'd be about twenty three bucks. But again, if we do the measured move from the current price to the wick high up there, which is eighty bucks, you'd be looking at one hundred and eighty five percent return. So. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.